This is the shooting show. This week I'm on this farm in East Yorkshire protecting this stuff from wood pigeons. Pigeons can cause serious damage on arable farms with substantial financial costs to the farmer. This corner has been attracting good numbers for a few days, so Shep sets out the decoys before joining me in the makeshift hide. One of the knock-on benefits of being out stalking a lot is of course you're out in the countryside, you see what's going on, and as today, I saw quite a lot of pigeons coming into uh, a game strip. There's one coming in. And uh, another one in the bag. I've always got the nets, a few cradles, and the spinner there in the freelander. We stole an afternoon's opportune sport, which we wouldn't have got, but I've just been out there this morning, saw these birds, and we've had uh, quite a bit of fun this afternoon. I keep the stalking on a lot of the ground that I cover in exchange for uh, keeping on top of the pigeons and the rabbits. And it's never a bind when the farmer calls in and says he's got a problem and you've got to respond every time. There's always plenty that will fill your boots. It's a wonderful opportunity to have permission to go on somebody's land. You've got to make the best of it, you enjoy it, but you've got a responsibility. And to keep that responsibility, you've got to be able to turn out on a night, sort the rabbits out. It's all fun to me, but it's something you must do. This is wood pigeon damage. It's a bit near to this riding school spot next door, so we don't put a banger on or anything. But uh, every opportunity we get, we seem to shoot pigeons wherever we can on the farm to stop this happening. As a typical farmer would? Yes. So they're now but a blooming menace. And crop damage wise, how, over a year, what, how would you uh, quantify how much damage that they do? Well they do quite a lot. Um, rape seed at the moment is about £350 a tonne, ex farm. So and as you can see here, by the time you get all this damage in, they'll have eaten over an acre down this side. And, and obviously throughout the year pigeons are, are, are many spent more times than other times but oh, what, yeah. what time of year is, is the worst time for you? Uh, February, March, that's when they do most of the damage at the rape. And, and what does it actually do to the plant then? Can it recover or not? Well as you see that doesn't recover because they never stop grazing it, they don't give it chance. There's quite a number of feral pigeons in the area and these come into the decoys just as good. You have to be careful, of course, with the stock doves. It's no longer legal to shoot the stock doves, but the feral pigeons are fair game. It's one of the few things that I shoot that I turn my nose up at to eat. I eat pretty much everything I shoot, but some of the feral pigeons are a bit scabby and toes missing, and no doubt at some stage they've been living in the local town and picked up all sorts of nasties. The pigeons aren't dropping to the pattern in large numbers, but the continual ones and twos keep it interesting. This strip of game cover will be important for the farm shoot later in the year, so we want to make sure the new growth has a chance to establish itself. Keeping on top of the crop munching pigeons will be a good start. Well, we've had a lull now for a good 20 minutes, half an hour. It's just past tea time. As my old mate Tony Megson used to say, wild fowling. When it's time to pack up, give it another 20 minutes. And you know, do you just love it? Another two for the bag. And I think that'll do for today's opportune pigeon shooting. What was the final bag? Uh, I think we took 38 pigeons, oh, well. two crows and 16, 17 ferals. Oh, that's better than nothing. So that's at least thinning them down a bit, stopping them nesting. 
Reading. And if we keep doing that, it actually moves them, moves the problems to somebody else. So. Yeah. Well, you'd like to think so. <laughs> as long as it's not your problem. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not mine, yeah. I don't want the bloody things. <laughs> no, they're not much a menace. With the shotguns in their slips, all that remains is to retrieve the spoils of an afternoon watching the sky. Some of these will find their way onto the dinner table, but I will be sure to keep a few whole birds in the freezer for use as decoys next time the phone rings with stories of crop raiding pigeons. It's a contradiction in terms, but that's a happy farmer. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Independent advisers to the government have recognised the benefits of shooting to woodland and the economy. The Independent Forestry Panel's report to ministers showed shooting in woodlands sustains 28,000 jobs, adding about £640 million to the economy. Both Basque and the Countryside Alliance welcomed the panel's findings. The CLA Game Fair said it will open as planned on the 20th to the 22nd of July, despite fears about the conditions at Beaver Castle. The poor weather has claimed a number of events already this year, including the Scottish Game Fair, which was called off when car parks became waterlogged. Five years ago, the CLA Game Fair was cancelled for the first time in its history, but organisers of this year's fair said everything was on schedule and contingency plans were in place to deal with any adverse conditions. Look out for Sporting Rifles' full CLA report in the September issue, out 9th of August. The Wolfer LGV 2012 series of air rifles has arrived in the UK. Made by German powerhouse Umarex and distributed in the UK by Armex, these new rifles could herald a new era for the humble Springer. The team at Airgun Shooter magazine is currently testing the rifle and will be bringing in-depth reviews to the page and the screen soon. A new shooting discipline got its unveiling at the International Junior Shooting Competition in Germany. The event, known as Run and Shoot, does exactly what it says on the tin, asking competitors to run 600 metres, hit five knockdown targets at 10 metres with a 177 air rifle, repeat the process and finish with a 600 metre dash to the line. For more information, visit the ISSF's website or pick up the September issue of Airgun Shooter magazine. And finally, the Great Fulford Estate Shoot, Devon, has announced that shooting will resume this game season. The full story is in the August issue of Modern Gamekeeping, out next month. That's the Shooting Show news. All you need to know about what goes bang and what falls over. Well, that's it for this week. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show. <laughs>